in case where uh, we have to transmit the load of superstructure to deep below the ground in that case we have to go with the deep foundation pile foundation is an example of deep foundation pier foundation is an example of deep foundation and then uh, well foundation is an example of deep foundation so we are having several example for the deep foundation so in situations where soil at shallow depth is poor in order to transmit load safely the depth of foundation has to be increased till the suitable soil stratum is met in view of increased depth such foundations are called deep foundation well foundation pile foundation and pier foundation are deep foundation right so in case when we are encountering a poor quality of soil when i am saying poor quality of soil means the soil is not having sufficient bearing stratum or the soil is not having bearing sufficient bearing strength to withstand the amount of load so in that case uh, in order to carry that load safely to the deep below the ground we have to go with the pile foundation right or well foundation or pier foundation now pile is a smaller diameter shaft which can be driven or installed into ground whereas pier and well foundation are large diameter shaft constructed by excavation and sunk to the required depth right so in case of pile foundation basically they are smaller diameter shafts that uh, that can be driven or installed into the ground whereas in case of our pier foundation or well foundation they are very large diameter shaft and in the in this case basically we have to excavate the soil and then we have to go with the construction but in case of well foundation they are very huge diameter uh, foundation that are sunk into the ground now the classification of pile so piles are basically classified uh, based on different criteria first one is your material and composition second one is your mode of transfer of load third is your method of installation fourth is your function or action fifth one is your displacement of soil now now we'll be discussing one by one first one is your classification based on material and composition so when whenever i am uh, talking about this material and composition so basically i'll be referring to these four points first one is your timber piles second one is your steel pile third is your concrete pile and fourth one is your composite pile so based on material and composition piles are classified among four categories right so composite pile can be either made up of timber or steel steel or concrete or timber or concrete but generally we will we will not be going with this composite pile just because in this case we have uh, in this case uh, there is a difficulty of providing joint between two different materials now second one is your classification based on the mode of transfer of load so whenever i am saying mode of transfer of load either uh, the load transfer mechanism can be through your end bearing or it can be through your skin friction or by the combination of both skin friction and end bearing so in end bearing uh, piles basically they are used to transmit load through the pile tip to a suitable bearing stratum passing soft soil of water right so in this case basically the load transfer will be uh, through the point bearing so point bearing means so uh, uh, the pile will pass through a suitable bearing stratum now friction pile friction pile are basically used to transfer load to a depth in a frictional material by means of skin friction along the surface area of pile so in this case basically the friction pile will transfer the load by the skin friction friction pile are also called as floating piles as they do not reach the hard stratum right so friction pile can be called as floating pile just because they are not, uh, they are transferring the load through skin friction and they are not reaching the suitable hard stratum such as rock now combined end bearing and friction pile so in case of combined end bearing and friction pile they are used to transfer load through both the effects means in this case you will get skin friction as well as end bearing now classification based on method of installation so based on method of installation piles are classified as your driven piles bored and cast in situ piles driven and cast in situ piles jack piles and screw piles right so first one is your driven pile so in case of driven pile these are the material that are used for the driven pile for, uh, timber pile steel pile or precast concrete pile may be driven into position either vertically or under an inclination right so in case of driven pile uh, the method of installation is like you will be having pile and this pile will be driven into the ground with the help of hammer so either they can be placed at a particular site either they can be placed at a particular point and they can be driven vertically or inclination based upon the requirement 
and whenever i am saying precast concrete piles means they are casted in the casting yard and then they are placed uh, then they are carried out to the then they are carried to the site where they are uh, uh, driven either in a vertical position or in a inclined position now if they are inclined then they are called better or raking piles so if your pile is uh, if your pile is uh, like uh, you are installing pile in at an inclination uh, so in that case you will be calling that pile as a better pile or raking pile now pile hammer and pile driving equipments are used for driving piles so for the driving uh, driven purposes we are using pile hammers and pile driving equipments now second one is your board and cast in situ pile so as the name itself is uh, signifying like board piles board piles means you will be simply uh, make a bore right bore hole and in that bore hole you uh, you will fill that bore hole with the concrete either it will be uh, so it that, that we are calling as cast in situ but uh, if it is driven in situ pile so there will be boring and then you are uh, driving the pile inside the ground so only concrete piles can be cast in situ this is quite obvious that concrete only can be cast in situ as the holes are drilled and filled with concrete these are straight board piles or under reamed with one or more bulbs at interval reinforcement is used according to the requirements right so uh, the board piles are basically straight board piles uh, and they uh, they are straight board piles all they can be under reamed means you you can uh, create one uh, one bulb or two bulb as per your requirements now driven cast in situ piles so driven cast in situ piles means a closed end casing or a shell is driven into the ground later casing is filled with concrete example frankie piles right so in this case basically what we are doing we will be having a pipe in, and that pipe can be closed one or either it can be shell at the uh, shell placed at the lower end and after that you will be filling it with concrete that is driven and cast in situ pile and such piles are uh, also referred as frankie piles now these are jack piles uh, these are piles driven into the soil by means of a hydraulic jack so jack piles are basically inserted into ground by means of a hydraulic jack and such piles are known as jack piles that are driven into the ground by means of hydraulic jack screw piles these piles are screwed into the soil by means of hydraulic jack by the action of hydraulic jack the piles are screwed and such piles are known as screw piles now classification based on function or action so based on function and action whenever i am saying so it first one is your load bearing piles then it will be your tension or uplift pile third one is your compaction piles and anchor piles fender piles sheet piles better piles so these many types of piles are there based on function or action so when i am saying load bearing piles basically they are used to transfer the load of structure to deep stratum by end bearing right or by friction or by both so this is called load bearing piles means the piles are basically be, uh, classified based on the load mechanism then tension or uplift pile so in case of uh, those structure where uh, your structure is simply uplifting by action of some water pressure or hydrostatic pressure or your uh, your uh, structure is basically overturning so in that case in order to resist such structure we are using tension or uplift piles then compaction pile used to compact compaction pile are basically used to compact the loose granular soil in order to increase their bearing capacity now as they are not required to carry any load right so compaction pile are not required to carry any load so they may be strong in fact sand may be used to form the piles so how the sand is basically uh, used in form of piles uh, a pipe is basically inserted uh, into the ground and that pipe is filled with sand later on will be uh, taking out that pipe from its place leaving behind the sand and that pile is known as sand piles so pile tube driven to compact the soil is gradually taken out and sand is filled in its place and forming a required pile called as sand pile anchor piles anchor piles are basically used to provide anchorage against horizontal pull from water or sheet piling right so in this case basically uh, we will be having one anchor structure that will resist that particular structure from the water pressure or any sort of pressure like uh, soil pressure then fender piles used to protect waterfront structures against impact from ship and other floating objects so in order to resist the waterfront structure against impact of ship and other floating objects we will go with fender piles 
then sheet pile sheet pile are basically used as a bulkhead or cut off to reduce seepage and uplift in hydraulic structure like sheet piles can be used uh, beneath the dam where uh, there may be chance of piping failure so what we are doing basically we are providing cut off cut off so that water uh, cannot pass through that particular uh, channel formed beneath the dam then better piles better piles are basically used to resist horizontal and inclined forces especially in waterfront structures right now this is better pile right so uh, these uh, better piles are basically driven at some angle now what will happen this structure is basically overturning about this particular point so the pile that are resisting this tension part they are known as tension pile and the pile that is resisting this compression part are referred as compression pile in this case basically we are having sheet pile and this sheet pile is basically resisted with the help of anchor pile that's why this pile is known as anchor pile and this uh, sheet pile either it can either it, uh, the soil can be placed here or water can be placed and this water is basically or hydrostatic pressure that is coming from back that is uh, deviating this sheet pile on leftward side so to in order to resist this sheet pile we are using anchor piles now classification based on based on displacement of soil so classification based on displacement of soil so it has been observed that the best way of classification is on the basis of classification is on the basis of effect of installation on the soil accordingly we will be having first one is your displacement pile and second one is your non displacement pile so as the name itself is signifying this that when you are driving or when you are you are making some board constancy to sort of thing so there will be uh, displacement of soil that uh, and those piles are referred as displacement pile means when you are displacing pile uh, inside the ground if you are so, uh, if there is a displacement in soil so we will be calling that pile as a displacement pile and if there is no displacement then we will be calling that pile as a non displacement pile so if during installation a large volume of soil is displaced laterally or upward is called displacement pile in case of your loose sand such a pile densifies the sand up to a distance of 3.5 times the diameter of pile measured from the center of pile this compaction leads to increase in the shearing resistance within this zone of influence so what this point says basically in case of your loose sand when you are inserting uh, pile into the ground it will densify uh, to a distance of 3.5 times the diameter of pile right and this much zone of influence will be compacted so in case of clay large displacement of piles basically remolds the soil to a distance of two times the diameter of pile so in case of your clay soil when there is a clay soil and when you are installing such kind of pile it will densify the soil to a distance of two times the diameter of pile basically it won't densify it will remold right it will remold the soil during pile driving high pore water pressure are set up around the pile soil regains its strength only after a period of time when excess pore water pressure has dissipated so in case of clay soil when remolding process is happening basically so there will be uh, sudden generation of pore water pressure inside the soil and as and when your pore water pressure get uh, disp dispatched out right then only the soil will regain its strength so initially you won't be getting any uh, strength increase you won't find any strength increase but later on you will be finding there will be a stress increase after the dissipation of pore water pressure so driven piles are preferred in loose to medium sand and are less preferred in case of clay and dense sand example of large or displacement piles are driven cast in situ pile driven pre stress pile steel piles and timber pile right so driven piles basically will be using in case of loose to medium sand not in case of dense sand and clay clay type of soil and these are the example of large displacement piles now rolled steel section piles screw piles and open ended hollow section piles are example of small displacement pile so in case you you want to have uh, this small displacement pile then you have to go with some hollow section piles right screw piles and steel section piles small displacement piles are used when ground displacement and ground disturbance are to be minimized this point is quite obvious when uh, the ground displacement or ground disturbance uh, needs to be minimized or we don't want that much uh, disturbance uh, to the nearby structure in that case we will be going with these hollow section pile or less displacement piles now non displacement piles 
so in case of your non displacement pile no displacement of soil will be observed during installation so in such piles voids are formed in the soil by boring or excavation and then these voids are filled with concrete so this is case of bored case where you are creating a hole you are excavating the soil and then later on you are filling it with concrete that is the objective of non displacement pile so sides of the void either it can be supported permanently by casing or temporarily by using bentonite slurry non displacement piles can be further classified as bored cast in situ or bored pre cast piles right so in this case first one uh, first case is like uh, you are simply excavating the hole and you are filling that hole with the concrete second one is your bored pre cast means the uh, pile that has been casted in a casting yard and it is carried to the uh, and it is transported to the site where uh, uh, where uh, it is placed on uh, the hole that is bored there is no heaving of ground this is quite obvious that in non displacement pile you won't get any heaving of ground there will be no noise and there will be no vibration generated in this case length of these pile can be easily varied at site and very long and large diameter pile can be installed since uh, we are uh, we are making a hole into the ground so these piles can be elongated to any uh, any length and it they can be uh, means their shape can also be varied accordingly enlarged and up to 3 times of pile diameter can be made in case of clay so in case of clay we can make make the enlarged section up to 3 times the pile diameter now construction process enables inspection of the excavated soil and its comparison with soil exploration data so when we are uh, making a hole into the ground we will be having some exploration data uh, in the beginning itself so when we are excavating so by excavating also we can simply inspect the soil whether uh, that uh, inspection is basically as per the uh, bored data we are having or not during the installation of pile soil on the side of bore hole softens due to contact with water used during boring or concreting it results in loss of shear strength obviously temporarily right so when we are making a hole into the ground so whatever soil that is there uh, adjoining or uh, we can say on the sides whatever soil is there it will it will it won't be having that shear strength just because we are continuously using water slurry to make that particular hole so okay now there is difficulty in concreting under water this point is quite obvious that when uh, you are simply making hole you are using water so you won't uh, means you won't uh, do th these two uh, things uh, simultaneously means uh, making hole also with water uh, using jets and you are concreting also you have to wait for some time pile should be casted or installed immediately after boring so as and when your boring process is over you you just go with your uh, this concreting part so that your pile can be casted driven concrete piles are generally of di diameter up to 500 mm but bored pile may be even up to 2 to 3 meter so in case of driven pile uh, the diameter is restricted till 500 mm but when you are going with the bored piles you can make uh, pile up to diameter 2 to 3 meter so in my next class i will be discussing about this pile load capacity in compression